In the late 2000s, VH1 had the reality TV game on lock with shows like Flavor of Love, Rock of Love, and I Love New York. But all of a sudden, their runs came to a screeching halt. On August 24, 2009, one of those Of Love shows called Megan Wants a Millionaire was canceled after three episodes. The reason being, had nothing to do with the ratings, even though that brand of reality TV was fading beforehand. But instead, one of their contestants was a killer. The contestant was Ryan Jenkins. Today we're going to talk about Ryan Jenkins' time on reality TV, what led him to committing this gruesome crime, and how he destroyed one of the greatest eras of reality TV. So without further ado, this is Ryan Jenkins, the man who almost ended reality TV. Before we begin, if you want to see music bios or more good videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And without further ado, on to our feature presentation. Ryan Jenkins was born on February 8, 1977 in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. His mother was a housemaker and his father was an architect. Not much is known about his childhood, early years, or how he obtained his millions, but he did went to Mount Royal College and graduated with, with a bachelor degree in aviation and business. Now I want to pause and talk about Megan Hauserman. In 2007, the second season of Rock of Love aired with Poison's Brett Michael. On the show, there was a tall, witty, yet smart blonde named Megan Hauserman. Megan had reality TV show experience beforehand. Earlier that year, she appeared and won on the WB series Beauty and the Geek, and she won $125,000. But anyway, Megan was a fan favorite on Rock of Love because of her looks, but on the show, she finished fifth. But thanks to her popularity, VH1 added her on I Love Money. Thanks to her smarts, despite being a blonde, she made it all the way to the finale, but the night before the final challenge, she quit the competition. Story goes, there was an I Love Money jury and each member on that jury were people she helped get eliminated. Instead of facing the jury and the jury exacting her revenge on her, she decided to leave the show. Afterwards, she was added on Charm School, Rock a Love Addiction. Megan was eliminated in the fourth episode for kicking in a contestant. On the reunion show, she made a very disturbing comment about the Osbournes which prompted Sharon into pulling her hair and kicking her off the show. Megan was sued Sharon Osbourne over the incident, but settled out of court. VH1 heard a comment from Megan saying she wants a millionaire husband who could take care of her on one of the VH1 shows she was filming. VH1 pitched an idea on her comment and she accepted. The show would be called Megan Wants a Millionaire and was ordered three seasons. The show's concept would involve 17 bachelors with net worth over $1 million. She would meet Ryan who was worth $2.5 million, but it will later be revealed that his family was worth that, not him. Now we never got to see how Ryan was on the show, but according to Megan, the two hit it off almost immediately and was the clear favorite to win her hearts as he had it all. Well, I can't legally work here unless I'm married. Oh. So. So We'd you're using married. me for a green card. I tell you this, if we get married, uh -huh. I won't get you to sign a prenup. Megan wanted to pick him to win, but the producers did not want that for some reason. So on the next to last episode, an emotional Megan eliminated Ryan in front of his family, who was there to cheer him on. Ryan was obviously devastated about this, as was Megan since she picked a guy she didn't want. After the show ended, Megan called Ryan to thoroughly explain his elimination as she wanted to secretly date him. But Ryan then told Megan that he moved on and married. The woman he married was Jasmine Fiore. Jasmine Fiore was a real estate agent and personal trainer by day, swimsuit model at night. Attractive as she was, she never struggled to find a soulmate. She met Ryan in Las Vegas and the two hit it off as they had the same birthday. The two quickly married as Ryan wanted to obtain his green card to live in America. But the relationship was rocky to say the least. Ryan had a bad jealous streak. One incident, Jasmine was kissing a close male friend. Ryan got jealous and hit her in the arm which caused her to fall in the pool. Jenkins would be charged with DV. Ryan was set to go on trial in December 2009 to address that charge. While the pair reconciled, their relationship would be inconsistent and Jasmine would move to Los Angeles. Meanwhile, BH1 called Ryan about an offer to join I Love Money and he easily accepted. His motivation on going on that show was to win Jasmine back. In July, he left Las Vegas for Mexico to film the show. Since the season never aired, most of the one I'm about to say is all alleged. But according to Lacey, who was a contestant on that show, 
Ryan was a beast on nearly every challenge. It was alleged that he won that season by the slimmest of margins as he barely won the final race. By rule, to avoid spoilers, winners get their payout after the final episode aired. But Ryan grew impatient with 51 Minds, the producers of I Love Money and all the other VH1 shows, and he wanted his money now. It's my money and I need it now! It's my money and I need it now! Shut the f*** up! They refused, but kept giving him $1,000 here and there for show appearances. After he got done filming I Love Money, Megan Wants a Millionaire was aired. On August 13th, 2009, in another effort to patch things up with Jasmine, they went on a vacation in San Diego. That same night, they attended a charity poker night at another hotel. Their night was going okay, but during the poker tournament, Jasmine texts her old boyfriend and tells him that she plans on leaving Ryan once the trip ends. Once their poker night ends, Ryan somehow found out about this and this led to a physical altercation. Once they arrive at the hotel, fear of the staff seeing a bloody woman, Ryan used a secret entrance to enter. That morning, Ryan checks out of the hotel, but Jasmine is nowhere to be seen. Once he arrives in LA, Ryan texts her friends that Jasmine went missing and have you seen her. One day later, he filed a missing person report for Jasmine Fiore and he leaves California. On August 18th, police find Jasmine Fiore dead. Her new body was stuffed in a suitcase, her fingertips were cut, and her teeth were pulled out. Police were able to identify the body thanks to serial numbers on her fake breast. An autopsy revealed that even though she was beaten, her cause of death was strangulation. She was 28 years old. What happened? All what I'm going to say were alleged by detectives who worked on the case. After they got back to the hotel using the secret entrance, Ryan grabbed the hotel phone and placed it outside of the room so Jasmine won't make any phone calls. Ryan then goes into full apologetic mode in hopes that Jasmine would forgive him. But Jasmine wouldn't and said she was done with him. This set him off and that's when Ryan strangled Jasmine to death. Barely thinking, he removes Jasmine's teeth and cut her fingertips so police cannot identify her. He stuffs Jasmine's body in a suitcase outside at the balcony and then eventually into Jasmine's car and that's when Ryan checks out of the hotel alone. After he leaves, he drives to Buena Park, California where he found an apartment complex to dump the body of Jasmine Fiore. By the time he arrived in LA, he had already abandoned Jasmine's vehicle. And this is where he texts her friends about Jasmine's disappearance. He then takes Jasmine's phone and uses it to text himself so it would give the illusion that Jasmine was still alive. By the time Jasmine's body was discovered, police quickly named her husband Ryan Jenkins as a person of interest. After he filed the missing persons report, he told police that he was going back to Canada because of an expiring visa. Police notified Canada and America to look out for Ryan Jenkins, but by that time, he already crossed the border. On August 20th, Ryan Jenkins was formally charged with Jasmine's murder and a warrant was placed. That same day, with the help of his half-sister, he checks in at an Alberta motel. Two days later, Jenkins failed to check out of the room and when the managers discovered the room, they found Jenkins hanging on a clothes rack using a belt. He was 32 years old. After Jenkins' death, VH1 canceled Megan Wants a Millionaire after three episodes. The show was placed on hiatus after the announcement of Jasmine's death. Editing for I Love Money 3 was halted and the season was cancelled, but I Love Money 4 was already in pre-production. VH1 launched its own investigation with 51 Minds, the production company that casted Ryan Jenkins. It was discovered that he had a 2007 incident where he was arrested for DV, and because of that, he should have never been casted. But because of the incident occurred in Canada, it was overlooked by 51 Minds. 51 Minds was ordered to pay $12 million in losses. As for Megan, her contract with VH1 was terminated. She stayed out of social media for years until re-emerging in 2016. Megan today lives in Boca Raton, Florida and has a son. But in the end, two lives were lost and the era reality TV was ruined by one man's sick crime. And that concludes the video. Tell me what y'all think in the comments below. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Rest in peace to Jasmine Fiore. And I'll see you next time.